In this video, we'll be looking at four different problems in which we're asked to determine whether or not there's a linear correlation between two variables. These four problems are very similar, however they differ in their approach to solving the problem. The approach to each of these problems is different because of the different information we're given in each one of the problems. In this first problem, the heights and pulse rates for a sample of 18 women were measured using technology with the paired heights and pulse data. The linear correlation coefficient was found to be 0.1401. And we're asked, is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a linear correlation between the heights and the pulse rates of women? Use a significance level of alpha equal to 5%. In this problem, we're not given very much to work with. We're told the value of the linear correlation coefficient. We're told that the number of women in the sample is 18. However, we're not given the data set. We're also not given the equation of the regression line. We don't have p-value, and therefore we can't measure p-value against alpha. For this type of problem where we're given very little information, the only way to make a decision is to look at the critical values of the Pearson correlation coefficient r. The table that you see here lists those critical values for a 5% and 1% level of significance. Down the left-hand side of the table, we see the n column. And for an n of 18, and for an alpha of 0.05, or 5%, we see that the critical value in the table is 0.468. For there to be a linear correlation, the correlation coefficient needs to be greater than the critical value. In other words, the correlation coefficient for this problem would have to be greater than 0.468 for there to be a linear correlation between the heights and the pulse rates of women. However, our correlation coefficient is 0.401, which is not greater than the critical value of 0.468. So that because the absolute value of the linear correlation coefficient is less than the positive critical value, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a linear correlation between the heights and pulse rates of women at a level of significance of alpha equaling 0.05. For a sample of eight bears, researchers measured the distances around the bears' chests and weighed the bears. The value of the linear correlation coefficient r is equal to 0.765. Using an alpha of 0.05, determine if there is a linear correlation between the chest size and weight. What proportion of the variation in weight can be explained by the linear relationship between weight and chest size? And here again, we're not given a great deal of information other than the sample size, which is 8, the value of the linear correlation coefficient, r, which is equal to 0 0.765, and the level of significance. Notice we're not given the data set. The only way to determine if there is a linear correlation is to look at the critical values of the Pearson correlation coefficient r. And looking down the column n, sample size, we find the value of 8. And going across the row 8 and down the column for an alpha equal to 5%, we see that the critical value is 0.707. And because the absolute value of the linear correlation coefficient is greater than the critical value, then we can say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there's a linear correlation between the distances around the bear's chest and the bear's weight at a significance level of alpha equaling 0 0.05. In answering the question what proportion of the variation in weight can be explained by the linear relationship between weight and chest size, we need to consider the value of the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. Therefore, to compute r squared, we'll take 0.765 and square it. And we see that the proportion of the variation that can be explained with the linear relationship is 0.585, which is the value of the coefficient of determination. Listed below are annual data for various years. The data are weights in metric tons of imported oranges and car crash fatalities per 100,000 population. Construct a scatter plot. 
find the value of the linear correlation coefficient r, find the p-value for the linear regression t-test, and using an alpha of 5%, is there sufficient evidence to conclude that there is a linear correlation between orange imports and crash fatality rates? Do the results suggest that imported oranges cause car fatalities? We'll do this problem using the TI-83. First going to the Stat Enter button and putting the data for the orange imports into list 1 and the data for the crash fatality rates into list 2. And to first see our scatter plot, we'll then go to the yellow Stat Plot button. We'll select Plot 1. We'll be sure that it's turned on. Come down to Type. Be sure to select the first type, which is the scatter plot. The X list will be List 1 the Y list, the data found in list 2, and the mark is the little square that we'll use to mark the different data points. To graph our scatter plot, we hit the Zoom 9 key, and here we have our scatter plot diagram representing the relationship between orange imports and crash fatality rates. From this, we can see that this is a negative correlation. However, to find the correlation coefficient, we will need to conduct the linear regression t-test. We'll do that by going to the Stat button, Test menu, and then using the up arrow twice to go to the Linear Regression T-Test. Under the Linear Regression T-Test, the X list is List 1, the Y list is List 2, the frequency is 1, and the sign found in the alternative hypothesis is always not equal to. The Regression EQ, or Regression Equation, will be pasted into the Y equal to button under Y subscript 1. We'll then go to Calculate, and we see that the p-value for this linear regression t-test is 0 0.016. Continuing down to get the correlation coefficient, we see that R, the linear correlation coefficient, is a negative 0.9434. The fact that the linear correlation coefficient is negative reinforces the fact that the correlation between ARGE imports and crash fatality rates is a negative correlation. Since our p-value is 0 0.016, which is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that R is equal to 0, and by rejecting R equal to 0, we reject that there is no correlation. Therefore, at a level of significance of 5%, we can say that there is evidence to conclude that there is a linear correlation between orange imports and crash fatality rates. However, a common misunderstanding of correlation and regression is that because there is a correlation between two variables, that does not mean that there is a causal relationship, that is, that one causes the other. If we hit the graph button, we see not only our data points, but also the regression line that the calculator has determined is the line that comes closest to each one of these data points. Hitting the Y equal to button, we see the equation of the regression line, and that equation is Y is equal to approximately 16.5 minus 0.028x, where 16.5 is the y-intercept, and negative 0.0028 is the slope of that regression line. Listed below are the overhead widths in centimeters of seals measured from photographs and the weights in kilograms of the seals. Construct a scatter plot, find the value of the linear correlation coefficient r, and find the critical values of r using alpha equal to 1%. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that there is a linear correlation between overhead widths of seals from photographs and the weights of the seals? We'll do this problem using the TI-83 to find the correlation coefficient r. We'll then compare the coefficient to the critical value for r using the alpha equal to 1%. So in the TI-83, we'll go to the stat enter key and enter the data for overhead widths in list 1 and the weight in list 2. We'll then go to the Stat button, Test menu, use the Up button twice 
to go to the linear regression t-test, hit enter, and the input into the linear regression t-test will be the x list list 1, y list list 2, the frequency once, the inequality sign is not equal to 0, the regression equation will be pasted into y subscript 1 under the y equal to button, and we simply go to calculate. Since we're interested in the correlation coefficient r, we'll use the down arrow to find r. Before we do, however, note that the p-value is equal to 0 0.007, which is an extremely low p-value. Therefore, using the p-value method, we would reject the null hypothesis that there is no correlation and conclude that there is indeed a linear correlation between the overhead widths of seals from the photographs and the weights of seals. Now going down to the r equal to 0.93, We'll use the value 0.93 for the value of the linear correlation coefficient r. Using the critical values of the Pearson correlation coefficient r table, we see that n is equal to 6. And for an n equal to 6 and an alpha equal to 0 0.01, we see that the correlation coefficient r is greater than the critical value. Therefore, because the absolute value of the linear correlation coefficient is greater than the positive critical value, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a linear correlation between the overhead widths of seals from photographs and the weights of seals at a significance level of 1%. And we see that this is indeed consistent with our decision to reject the null hypothesis with a p-value of 0 0.007 and an alpha of 1%, because here our p-value is less than an alpha of 1%, and we decide to reject the null hypothesis, therefore reject that there is no correlation.